So here we are again, and it's, uh, as you can see, the enormity of the job is really starting to show. Um, you, you can get the size of the station, you can see Phil starting to put the platform in, the, the, the tops. Um, you can see we've ballasted up part of the layout already. We're uh, starting to paint rails. We've put the shuttering in. Um, so we're two weeks before Christmas and hopefully I'm trying desperately to get it all ballasted and in a state of detail by the second week in January because I need the whole of January really February and March for the catenary because it's far more complicated on this than on the previous two layouts as you can see you know you've got massive gantries on this layout um, and 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 also different different droppers for the wires to hang off so this we've never used this system before so this is a whole new uh, experiment but it's starting to come together it's interesting a couple of the lads have been here today haven't been for a couple of weeks and they're shocked with how far we've come in that two weeks but having been at Milton Keynes on Thursday I've done my leg in um, the size of the task really when you're on the ground shows itself it, it, it's amazing so are you constantly going back and evaluating how close you are to the real thing or well we've gone we've gone back twice now I don't think we need to um, do another site visit um, we filmed all the fil all the platforms. Um, the thing we went this time for really was the car parks, because right. car parks are not on Google Earth; they're brand new, okay. and they're very distinctive. So um, that's why we went back for the, a visit this this weekend. Uh, so we've got it all covered. Is this what period is this set? Is it ultra now, modern? Now, now. now. Okay. ultra modern. This is like. If you went today, this is what Milton Keynes Station looks like. Right. So it's not trying to do in the past. It, it literally now, so that when we go to Milton Keynes in 2023, it will be, other than all the builders that are currently at uh, Milton Keynes, it will be, you, you'll be able to walk physically out of the arena down to the station and it'll look exactly and the same. And you'll recognise it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Are you, uh, are you building mobile exhibition pieces or museum pieces? Because it, it seems that you seem to be building mobile exhibition pieces of a, possibly of a museum quality. I think you either got to do it right or you don't do it at all. I mean, I, mean, I think that's the simplicity of it. We, we, we want it to be right. Um, I mean, we want it to, to be a, a working model to, to attract people and interest people. But you've also got to sort of realise the enthusiasts are coming, you know, they're going to have, they're going to be critical. They're going to count the rivets. Well, they're going to count the rivets, um, you know, but the, the problem that we have that most modellers don't have is if you work out, you know, the track, we've got 64 feet of track, four, five and six times now. So where we've always had four, we've got seven on, on some of these lines now. So you're talking about seven times 64, and mm. that's a lot of track. Mm. So it's a lot of track to paint, a lot of track to ballast, but more important, you can't, you can't do fussy things like worry about the spacing on the sleepers. You just can't. You've got to accept mm. that what Pico give you is the best you're going to get. Right. Because to do 64 feet would take you weeks. To do right. 467 feet, it will take you a year. Right. I mean, just I, I was impressed when I saw the platforms go down a few weeks ago, and now the scaffolding underneath, under the edges, and so on. I mean, the detail there, and it's it's not just in a little section; it's the whole thing. Yes, the well, whole length. If you remember going back to when you first did the video, way back two years ago, I expressed the opinion about clutter. Model railways, model rail, modelers are obsessed with clutter, and they put in dairies and coal mines and castles and bus depots and scrap heaps and so on and, and so on station. and everything right right 
There is enough clutter on a modern station for you never, ever to be able to model it. Right. Because if you look at pictures of Milton Keynes, just the amount of benches and Milton Keynes central signs are a task in itself. So it's like modern clutter is it's necessary. So if you're going to want to put lots of clutter in, mm. put it in that's really on the railway. Because the railway, the signs everywhere, there's barriers everywhere, because you're on an unsafe environment. And that's, I've never seen anybody model that, yet they'll model a, model a, a scrapyard down the bottom of the road. Right. And, and to me, that's like, guys, you've got enough work in a small station, let alone a big station. Reality's busy enough. Reality is busy enough and, and picturesque enough. Mm. You know, it's interesting enough, you know. Right. I mean, we, I worked out a silly little fact. On Milton Keynes platforms, one, two, three, four, five and six, there are 43, 43 telephone boxes. So right. that the, so the staff can phone the signal box. Right. Now, how many models do you see with 43 telephones on? Yes. Because yeah. nobody, nobody yeah. bothers, because they're against the canopy, you can't see them. Mm. But they're there. Yes. You know. Well, looking at the detail, the attention Phil's going to, just with the canopy and the, the support, I mean, it looks impressive, and all he's doing is, at this point, putting it together without the detail. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it, you know, it's not simple. No. But if you, if you take... We've got the technology and we use it, you know. And like when you take the gantries and, you know, here you've got these bizarre gantries which we've, you know, you don't... we got two on, on, the, on the last layer, making tracks two. We've got 27 on this one, plus some double gantries. Now, they make a big difference, you know. How do you stop them being pulled? Because they were single support, yes? Yeah, but they're, they're quite... Look, they're really strong. They, okay. they won't bend, look, they won't move. Right. And they're only wood. Mm. Um, but that's, you know, you, you're talking about catenary. I mean, this looks flimsy, but it isn't. It's actually, like, can't bend it. So... Oh, I've never seen them that size. So it's just... Yeah. It's a leap, leap of faith, isn't it? Yeah. But we, we you know, we've, we've always believed from day one that you can do it if you engineer it properly. Mm. You know, all these, I mean, you couldn't, I mean, people say, well, are they etched? Well, you couldn't, you couldn't make that an etch because the heat would, would dissipate so quick, it would buckle like crazy. You just couldn't do it. So, you know, this system, and, and plaster card is too weak. Mm. Um, we tried, we've gone from MDF to uh, very fine ply now. Uh, and it, it, it works a lot better. Um, but it, the, the point is, I guess, at the end of the day, you either going to want to get it right or you don't. Mm. And to me, we want to make it look right. Yes. And therefore, to us, the enjoyment of this is making it and seeing when you're running it, seeing people's... Uh, enjoyment when it, you know, particularly yours when you're flying them around at 400 miles an hour, the kids are all getting all excited. Uh, and that's, you don't even notice that there's 40 telephones on, no. the, on the platforms. You're not interested. Something well, that's for fine. Everyone. That's, mm. that's fine by me. Mm. You, you know, Phil pointed out the other day a really unusual feature is when they built the new blocks, they put in trees. Right. But they're Cypress Lalandois. Okay. Now, the world, and particularly council and conservationists, absolutely frown on Cypress Lalandois. Right. So what they've done is they've chopped all, of, they've taken all the bottom branches off. So they now look like weird trees. So, you know, in between the building, you've got these, what would you say they are, 40 foot cypresses? They're as tall as a station. Yeah, tall as a station, and there's no bottom on them. So, so you're modeling weird trees. You're, you're modeling really weird trees, but they're so distinctive when you see them in a picture. You go, oh, they're conifers. No, they're not. They're Cypress Lalandois, because they've chopped the bottom off to make them look like, right. you know, cedars. Now, does anybody care? I care. Because mm. it's a feature. 
like a, a musician, I suppose. I don't have to be a musician to know that somebody's played the wrong note, but I would have to be a musician to tell them how to play it correctly, and it's the same with model railways. Yeah, yeah, it is, absolutely right, uh, yeah. Things jump out at you, yeah. and everybody will see something different. Yeah, but... it's like the other thing, Dave, I mean, when we did the first pictures of the platform guns, everybody said, there's a curve on them. Well, there is a curve on them. The problem is, in 4mm, that curve is gentle. Right. Right, and when you're using lenses on cameras, it, it straightens them out. Yeah. So you can see the curve from here. Look, there's a, a massive curve. You can see by the track. Yes. But when you see a photograph when we first posted the platforms in, they look straight and we had all these comments about what the curve. But, you know, you have to sometimes remember you're modelling in scale. Yes. You've brought that down to four mil. Now, we know this is right because we've used Google Earth. Right. So it can't, you know, we've had to compromise but we've not compromised on the actual station. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've got, you know, you can see, if you look at pictures over the last couple of weeks I've posted, I got the brick colours wrong. Right. So we go there on Thursday, the first thing that Phil says to me, I told you the bricks were, were concrete, so it means I've had to come in today and take all the platforms out and repaint them. Right. But it's right, it's yes. right to do it. It's yes. not, you know, somebody's going to walk along and go, they're not brick, they're concrete. Mm -hmm. They're concrete bricks. Yeah. You know, and you, it's a fair comment, yeah, we should have noticed that. More importantly, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose the model making, the art of model making, is knowing which compromises you should make. Yeah, and the, the other compromise that we have to do is we have to do things in big, broad sweeps. So you can see Andy and Pete are painting the track faces, because they've got to be, mm. but I can't paint the platform by hand. No. I've got to use spray cans. Right. So I've got to literally find how to match those colours. But this is where today I found a fantastic concrete colour. Right. And I've learned that Airfix do a fabulous rust colour, right. which I've, I've never used before, but mm. a war gamer said, have you tried this? It's brilliant. So that's what Pete and, uh, and, and Andy are using. Um, so you learn, I'm learning all the time. You know, somebody will say to me, well, have you used this paint or have you seen this paint? And you go... And for, you know, for 10 quid a, a can, for me, that saves me hours. So I did the platforms in less than five minutes. Right. To hand paint all those would probably take two hours. What's this, Rust-Oleum, is it? Yeah, Rust-Oleum. Yeah. I mean, it's just, and it's like 10 quid a can. Right. It's, it's like, I've saved myself one, uh, one and three quarter hours. Yes. And time's money yeah. when you've got this scale to build yes. on. So in terms of your time plan then for, for construction work, when do you expect to have, you know, principal track laid? And all the track's laid. Is it? So the oh, whole... I've done it. Okay. I've done all the track. Okay. Right, so what I'm having to do is at the minute, um, because we want to try this big, um, big challenge at, at uh, Melton Keene this year, I'm having to try and work out how to use two and one on the same layout. So I'm building three, but I've got to pay attention to two on that end and one on that end. What do you mean by two Well, because we want to join all three and try and get one super layout for Milton Keynes. Right, OK. So, I, yes, I've got to design this and build this, but I've got to make sure that that board there... Yeah which is the throat, right? fits on the board at the end there, well, that's making tracks too. So it kills me tunnel. Right, so all three layouts you've made are standalone. Yes. But you're going to integrate them as well. Well, we're going to try. OK. So that's, that's our aim. Right. Um, which means that we have to build two separate cross boards for this layout, which we'll never use again, other right. than for Milton Keynes. So like an adapter board. Yes. But then we can join it to... We've got that end, that joins. But I can't join that end until we've moved this down or we've built the station. So I have to, you know, because the track must line up. Right. So you, you, you know, you can't have a... I can't make a board that fits three boards. You know, it's got to yeah. 
one must fit two and two must mm. fit three. Well, in this case, it's two fits three fits one. It's right. the other way around because, of course, if you remember, Milton, uh, the first uh, layer, making tracks one finished at Watford. Mm. So you come rugby, Milton Keynes, Watford. Watford. So it works. Yes. Purely by chance, by the way. It wasn't... It wasn't planned. It was designed that way, surely. That wasn't. I had, I'd love to say it was, but it wasn't. Um, but it means that if we had to go back to the cathedral next year, 2024, we would be able to take Making Tracks 1 and remake it, because we can't ever use the Caffeine Viaduct again. Right. So we could actually do a Making Tracks 1 and a half, if you like, right. because we've already lost uh, 16... 24 feet off the original layout. We've lost right. 24 feet. Mm. So we could, if we wanted to, go back in 2024 with 64 feet of new making tracks. Right. It'll be half and half. Have you thought about operational issues? Like, how are you going to see a train 100 feet away? You're not. Right. 150. You're not going to see it. Okay. And that's the point. You're not going to see it, but that's, that's part of the... Right, so if you look at this board... We've, we've compensated. If you look, the boards are not straight. Okay. So you haven't got 150 feet of straight boards. You've actually got a kink in, in the boards. Yep. Because your station is four foot. Yep. Our normal layouts are two foot. Yep. So rather than go two foot, four foot, we've gone two foot, two foot. Okay. So we've put like a Z in it. Right. So that when you walk in and you see 150 feet or whatever it is, mm -hmm. You can't just look straight down it and not see it. You've got to move down with it. So that's for, you're forcing people to... Yeah, you're making... Yeah, you, you walk about. And, you, you know, like you would on the rear railway. You, mm. you can't stand at Milton Keynes and see Watford Gap. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's mm. like you've got to move. Right. And so the idea is this, that... Yeah. I mean, we, I did think about... You know, you, I woke up one night and thought, hang on a minute, the problem is you can't just build... 154 feet of straight boards because what it is is just like whoosh. it's gay electric, then, yeah, isn't it? yeah, and it, it, yeah, the track's going to move, but it's just there's no interest in the boards and the scenery because with this, obviously, with the backboards on, we haven't got any backboards on it, suddenly makes a whole different scene when you see the backboards, you can't see round corners, right? Well, that's the theory, and you're still going to hand. Handsets over to members of the public. Oh yeah, youngsters and what. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no we're not changing it. It's, it's not I mean, about us. It's got operating. so many unique aspects to this. Well, one modeling. thing, one thing I noticed on Thursday when we were there, which was I thought was brilliant, was um, this line here is the down up slope. Okay. Right. All the freights were all coming that way and that way. So on what Thursday when we were there, this line was completely bi-directional. Okay. Every freight, every 66 was only on this line. Didn't use that line at all. They were all on here. So one, except for there was one on the fast, yeah. But because of the because of the strikes and the trains all getting back into circuit. They all use this one, which I thought was brilliant, because that, that's a unique piece of operating. Right. So, you know, one minute you've got a train going that way, and then the next minute it's going that way. Of course, you've lots of problems in your fiddle yard, hmm. but it looks great on the front, doesn't it? Because yeah. you're thinking, hey, that's, that's on the wrong line. <laughs> yeah, I think we will. I'm going to talk to, to, talk to Phil about it, because I, th I thought it was clever. I thought it was really interesting. We saw one one on the fast, but all the rest were all on the on that line. We didn't see one on that at all. No, no, but we can do that. But when in the fiddle yard, you're going to. But can we have engines going one way and another, or we just put a point in extra? No, no, you don't need to. Because if it's going towards London, it'll stay left. Yeah. If it's going. Away from London, it'll, come, it'll go left to the end. It'll stay in line. Yeah, because it'll come in here yeah. and go over. That's it. Yeah, there you go. See, Phil sorted it out already. Brilliant. <laughs> He's there ahead of me. That's why I put that extra point in. Right. Yeah, I mean, I was shocked about that on Thursday because I, 
as I said, I've never seen, and I mean, we, I've been to Milton Keynes literally thousands of times, and I've been as for this project three or four times watching, and I've never seen that. But this week on Thursday, is that just because it's straight? I think it was putting trains in in the, in the light, yeah. But it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just get everything back in order. Just stop. So, Phil, you've gone to the trouble to model different edges on different platforms. Yes, because the, the added platform is six and two way afterwards, and there's slight variations. And then part of the platform, I think, was starting to fall to bits, so they put scaffolding under for support. So, you've modelled the scaffolding. Yeah. Have you gone all the way down the platform? Uh, except for the uh, baseboard join, where they. Where in real life they've used concrete blocks, so we did the same. There's 80 printed parts for that. Wow, that's so impressive. So we're looking at the point motors, these are servos again. And. <laughs> We are on the other baseboard, more servo motors. And oh. on top, we can see the point. Oh. All right, that's great. Luckily, they're all the same. Wow. Yeah. It's mirrored glass. Okay, Pete, what are you working on at the moment? Right, just to prove we are completely nuts, right? And we talk about detail. This is last shuttering, which is for the uh, that keeps the. Uh, Keeps the banks back, right? And, and you can see on motorways now, particularly Milton Keynes, there's lots of it, right? In fact, this is how they built Milton Keynes. But what you notice very quickly is the earth moves. So it's not as simple as just putting in shuttering, right? Because what you notice is there are these little things that fit in here. Because they're the bolts that go in. If the if the ground moves, they put these securing bolts in. And if you look at Euston, where they're building the new HS2 station, oh, it's like station, it goes in through the rock and everything. It goes through the rock. They pile in with a drill, fill it with concrete, put the steel rods in, so that it secures even the shuttering. So we're daft enough to have printed them, and we're going to add them to these. Wow. So I'm going to add one and then I'll paint it and show you what it looks like. So give me a minute. As I often say to customers, it's your train set, you do what's right for you. Yeah, absolutely right. So I'll put two in. It's all on the fucking video. Even on the download. So I get me uh borrow, can I borrow your paint a sec and please?
And they just use it then. Okay. Oh, we got just two. So there's your anchors. And all we got to do. Standard And there you go. Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Let's get right in there. Oh, well, I was just going to. That's brilliant. Yeah. Are oh, you going in the right place now? No. Oh, no? No, it goes where I went, Andy. Oh. This one goes where Andy is over there. This, oh, this, this thing here goes in that gap right there. Oh wow. Which is why. Right, when you're ready. So we've got a new sponsor this year which is really exciting for us because we use so much of their product. So Pico have come on board, so they've supplied the track, the points and all the catenary which is a, a big plus for us. That means we can obviously put more into the cathedral. So um, we will be doing lots of stuff with Pico as well as uh, Hornby. And this is all Pico track here, is it? Well, we've always used Pico tra right. track. So all, all, all three layouts are based around Pico track on the front. All the fiddle yards are, are Hornby double, double straights. We did that deliberately so that youngsters can go and literally get their first train sets and plug them together and, and do that. That was deliberate. Right. Um, but we're hoping now that Obviously, we're bringing more people to see how easy it is to use the Pico Flexi tracks and the points. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting for me. Uh, and for more information and up to date pictures, you've got the Facebook page. Yeah, um, Rail Nuts uh, and also the Cathedral have it on their website. Um, and obviously, you can always look at the Hornby Hobbies, you know, Hornby uh, Magazine website, they've got the dates. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Pleasure.